two, three, key idea. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, welcome back to Sonic Weekly. I am Grant. This is the show where we talk mostly about Sonic the Hedgehog, but uh, you never know what's going to happen with these crazy guys, these wild and crazy guys. Let's introduce you to who we are talking to, because we're talking to Bo. Hi, Bo. Here we go, buddy. Hey, tell your mom, tell your dad, we were super rad today. I don't know what that means. That feels like a reference. I feel like there's some signs of recognition. We'll get to that in a second. Here he is out of the shadows into the spotlight. He's the star of the show. It's David the Lurker. Hi, David. Whoa, that's me. I was like, I wonder who that is. And I forgot it. It's me. That's you. That's that's what's being introduced. Hello, Grant. Hello, Bo. Man, I see you're sitting there ready and willing to talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm super ready. And so is our friend that's joining us as a guest. Uh, He's previously been on the show. Happy to have him back. It's our pal Sango. Hi, Sango. Hi. Glad to be back. Thank you. Cool. Well, if you're listening to the show for the first time, what we do is we check the news. We do a little shitty chat and we do a little bang bang. And we're going to get into talking about Sonic Prime, which we have not talked about since you have previously been on the show. Yeah. Which I believe was prior to the last two seasons airing. That's correct. So since we last talked, season three and season four uh, come and gone. The whole arc I, I, is I'm done. I'm afraid I have to correct you, correct you there, Grant, <laughs> but uh, I believe it was actually season two and season three. There is no season filler. Son of a... Yeah. Much to my chagrin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Judges agree. Song goes right. Grant is wrong. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. Well, good. Uh, you know, something. Um, so you know what you're talking about with Sonic Prime. We've established that, and that is good. Well, I'd like to think so. but We've got some Sonic news to start with with David. We've got some Sega Saturn news with Bo, and then we'll get into Sonic Prime. David, Sonic news. I'll give you the headline. You give us the commentary. All right. The rumor is Whoa. that a Sonic Fall Guys game called Toys Party is coming, and it features 32-player matches. Get this online with characters including Sonic, and get this, Tails, and get this, Knuckles, and get this, Shadow, Eggman, Amy, Metal, Sonic, and more. More. Wait, more? Yeah, and, and more of the Armadillo. Wow. Mighty's cousin. I, I, I have an extremely basic question. So pretend I'm the uncle from another world from the anime, uncle from another world, and I like disappeared in 1997 and whatever. What's Fall Guys? Oh, Fall. <laughs> well, okay. Have you ever like gone to a family gathering? Let's say uh, Easter. You know, it's Easter Sunday. Everyone is hanging out. The kids are looking for eggs. And the uncles uh, who, who are from this world, not another world, they're all sitting around. Uh, having having a few brewskis, as it were, and um, they they end up tripping and falling because they are drunk and don't want to be there. That's not it. Fall guy. <laughs> uh, it, I feel like it 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 was really big a couple of years ago. It's it's one of those. Uh, it's sort of a battle royale style multiplayer. Hey, look, a bunch of us got to go through a short little obstacle course. Sega has partnered with with fall guys before uh there were some sonic the hedgehog costumes that one could purchase with real money i assume uh they're funny they control a little funny uh you run through you try to get to the end before everyone else and there's a few rounds and so i forget how many it starts with if it's 32 64 whatever you know each round more and more people die until the end and one is crowned i played it briefly uh in the early days of the pandemic um and and never won, and then stopped. Uh, so hey, you know it, it's it's fun enough. Uh, there were people. Uh, there was a lot of internet content made around it, and so I guess in in classic what Sega fashion, if if this rumor is true, they're jumping on the bandwagon of something that I I don't know if many people care about as much at this point. I was gonna say that sounds that does sound like classic. Yeah. yeah yeah wait so is it is it real fall guys or is it like knockoff fall guys uh well it's rumored fall guys so we don't really know <laughs> it's in it's in the style of fall guys 
right? R- right. And there are also Sonic costumes that once were available, as you said, mm-hmm. in Fall Guys. Here's how my uncle, if he knew it, how to express this, would explain to you. Is that you'd be like, you know the fucking minions guys? The little fucking minion assholes, they're they're jumping around and they're falling all over the place. And then at the end, there's just one little minion and he runs like an asshole to get there. And then he's standing as the last guy. Every else the guy, every else guy has fallen. Well said. <laughs> the, there was a ru- uh, the rumor about this game started uh, a couple months ago in January. It was like, hey, there's a rumor there's a mobile game coming. It's Sonic Fall Guys. I guess it's been... Uh, reaffirmed Sonic Stadium cites insider-gaming.com that they've seen, quote, internal videos. Uh, I believe Tails Channel also has said that they've seen things that confirm that this exists. So it it seems that un- unless somebody is pulling the wool over uh, these people, I don't even know who insider-gaming.com is. Uh, yeah. Do, do you? No. Sounds like a front. <laughs> it, could, it could be it could uh right tom henderson is the name of the uh author on that article oh i like tom yeah okay no, i don't know I, I you know what i'm thinking of a different tom henderson oh yeah okay what was that movie harry 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 and the, harry and henderson. the henderson's yes yeah um, and there was a tom henderson mm-hmm. all right it was a movie it was also a tv show yeah but yeah, uh, Tales Channel, you I guess. Harry and the Hendersons are coming to Fortnite. Are they? Wow. <laughs> yeah. do, when do you think that's happening? Do you think, and if so, will they come to Fall Guys? And if so, will they come to Sonic Toys Party? Right. Harry and the Hendersons DLC. Right. That seems to be the, the rumored name, Toys, Toys the name. Party. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is it specifically all Sonic stuff? Is that the rumor so far? uh yeah like the characters are sonic characters and like yeah okay so that i so there's 32 playable characters interesting which means we would have to name 32 playable sonic characters right. which okay. means no problem. probably which means that you guys are about to do that <laughs> <laughs> well it means that probably comic characters like tangle and whisper mm-hmm. who have appeared in some of the mobile games before might appear in this which could be relatively unusual maybe uh, uh, less likely is Styx from Sonic Boom, but you can't write her off completely because she was referenced in Sonic Frontiers. Right? Maybe sure. maybe Sage will be one of the the uh, playable characters. Well, they describe some of like the activities that you're going to be doing, right? So Fall Guys is it's an obstacle course. It's it's competitive platforming. It seems like so this is races. It's who can collect the most rings, who can survive until the end against a boss. That's some of what the article is saying. I don't know if that's and they, and they look like toys. And they do they look like toys? Is that is that part of the hook? I guess toys can look like anything. All right, or it could be Sonic's playing with his toys. Oh, uh. he has a toy. Doesn't he have a toy? Wait, Sonic Shuffle. Right? Yeah, Sonic Shuffle. There's a toy box, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I I blank that out when I see Sonic's mouth, and I just erase it from my memory. Do you think you'll be able to play as Sonic's race car bed? I hope so. <laughs> in the same way you could like control one of the Daytona cars in mm-hmm. Fighters Mega Mix. Uh, uh, <laughs> Don't get me started. Right. <laughs> so uh, Sang- Sango, are you into uh have you played have, are you into the Fall Guys? Have you played a Fall Guy? I am afraid I have not played a Fall Guy. Uh, oh. No. I am I am not part of the Minions generation, which I guess <laughs> what? will will associate those two things together from now on. Oh. You're not Dressing up in a suit and going to a movie theater didn't that wasn't that a thing? Was it? Yeah, I, th- I think it was like oh these 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 kids they 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 dressing in suits and going to see the Minions movies. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that uh, meme. Hey, speaking of memes, whoa, you guys see this Willy Wonka thing? In, uh, <laughs> yeah. This yeah. AI Willy Wonka, and then in the the sad reality of the Willy Wonka. I've I've been into it. I've been obsessing uh, over it a little bit. Uh, there's a there's a Facebook group where people have been posting photos and talking about it. And somebody uploaded the PDF, the entire script that they were supposed to read and memorize the actors there. Oh, maybe right. You should. Oh wow. You should probably uh, explain it more in case somebody hasn't looked on Twitter in the last seventy two hours. How do you explain it? Okay, so I mean, it <laughs> a the historical record. Historical, right. It's a so company good. sold a Willy Wonka 
uh, experience a, a yes, live... the House of Illum- Illuminati was the name of their uh, oh really the production company or the and, and where was this. Where was where was this in the UK? Glasgow, right? Glasgow, oh, okay. Glasgow. Yes. Scotland. <laughs> yes, and the reality was that it was a pretty empty warehouse with some cardboard decorations and one very distressed-looking woman, sort of dressed as an Oompa Loompa, and in front of a what looks like a meth station, a meth making <laughs> lab, and because she's surrounded by smoke, it looks kind of like. <laughs> A scene out of like it's it looks I mean it's too outlandish for a breaking bad villain, mm-hmm. but just just slightly. Yeah. But but I think the news hook is that it was advertised like to the nines. It's like, uh, oh, come to the Willy Wonka experience, and there's like this beautiful art, which is evidently generated by artificial intelligence, and then the <laughs> reality is just this empty warehouse with sad people. Yeah. They charged forty five dollars right. for it. I heard. They had to go and change and money and everything. Forty-five Glasgow dollars, whatever those are, <laughs> uh, the equivalent of forty-five dollars. Yes, uh, it 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 was um it was put together by a man who I guess is very much into AI. He has released over ten books on Amazon that were all written by Chat ChatGPT. Mm, uh, that sucks. Oh yeah, uh, and yeah. and so all the artwork to advertise experiments. Uh, experience was done with AI and even the official website most of it is just weird AI like you can tell it's very yeah. obvious uh, <laughs> nobody got paid nobody got paid you mentioned you have the script I heard that was also chat GPT oh yeah when AI you read it it's just it's non it's word salad a lot of it yeah I mean it's 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 like a 15, 14 15 page thing but there's a lot of empty space in it so it's not really that long yeah and the plot is, hey, fake Willy Wonka, Willy uh, Mc, Mc, McDougal, McCool, Mc, Mc, it's something. He walk, He's just like, hey, welcome to my, welcome to my thing. Uh, there is an evil being who lives in the walls called the Unknown. He's an evil chocolate maker, and he wants to <laughs> steal the. <laughs> it it was this anti graffiti gobstopper. That's what it was called, and. And it's like, oh yeah, the anti graffiti gobstopper is what you can use to clean your room. It will help. It'll help the mums out there pick up your dirty socks. And the evil chocolate maker wants to use it, the unknown, to cause chaos in the world. And uh, uh, Willie McDuff, Willie McDuff is. It makes no sense because also the script lists how the audience is meant to re- react. So clearly, it was made by some. It is very much an, an AI thing. Uh. The unknown is a terrifying image. The <laughs> unknown looks like the Baba Duke in the Wizard of Oz sequel. <laughs> it's like the somehow both the monkeys on wheels and the Baba Duke at the same time, and it's just mm-hmm. some guy holding a mirror. Really, like it's just some stupid. Yeah, he's just hiding behind he, a mirror. He, he, um, here's like, a hot take, though. Like I could have predicted that this would be bad without you know the fraud or the ai component because willy wonka is bad are you saying conceptually that like you couldn't you wouldn't want to eat off the walls you wouldn't want to lick thinking, the wallpaper this is this terrifying story oh sure it's somehow still sold as like oh yeah sure this is fine for children and then your yeah. grandma is like showing you the tape and it's like no sit down and watch this and you're like grandma we don't want to watch this and she's like no you got to sit down it's magical and then <laughs> you know like your sister and you're you're crying and then it's like just watch the tape and then it's like not rewound and all right, all right too real too real too real it's too right <laughs> wait 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 what was the last time you saw willy wonka in the chocolate factory what 1992 <laughs> I think you might need to get another watch. You should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now there is something to be said for how nasty and abusive towards children that story is. <laughs> yeah, but you know, yeah. so I'm not wrong. Not wrong. It's all he makes. He makes a very uh, frightening first impression. Willy Wonka does. I had a last impression too. <laughs> yeah. Most of those kids. Yeah. You know, maybe they. Maybe they live. Maybe they don't. <laughs> Did anybody see the new Timothy Chalamet? Wonka. Yeah. You did? I did. Uh, how was it? Uh it was pretty much what you'd expect, I think. It, it was it was pretty good. That's what I'll say. Wow. Um pretty good. I thought that's the song and dance numbers were fun. Uh I think it was definitely above 
the bar set by like the Disney live action remakes, for example, um, and sequels. Mm. It was all very charming and happy and did not have the nastiness that I think actually makes the original movie work. Um, an all, all-time classic, really. Oh. So I guess it's before Wonka becomes rude. It's like yes. it's like the Cruella movie where she loves Dalmatians. And so they didn't yes. get to the point where she's like, I want to murder Dalmatians exactly. and wear them. Uh, yeah. Very sympathetic. She, she, she has Dalmatians at the end of that movie. I've had thought... <laughs> I know, I'm going off a tangent. I guess what I'm saying is like Cruella by itself isn't a bad movie, except for the extremely goofy beginning where dogs kill her parents or whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> it definitely is like, I don't know why it's Cruella DeVille specifically, why you've made, decided to make this movie. But by itself, if you don't know what 101 Dalmatians is, or the live action 101 Dalmatians, or 102 Dalmatians, the live action one, or of course the direct to DVD or VHS 101 Dalmatians uh, film, or the, the animated series that Disney made, or the book, or the book sequel, you know, where all... I can all tie this back. I can tie this back. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, because uh, the Sonic Cinematic Universe... Oh, okay. ...has news, first of all, that the Knuckles episodes are apparently, uh, for the, the miniseries event, going to be about an hour long each. That seems insane. Oh, no. An hour? What? <laughs> That's long. What? That's a that's a long while are they sure they've got six hours of it's like three movies it's like three movies that's a lot that's a trilogy and they're and they're gonna waste that on knuckles i mean embrace it i it does make you wonder what they're doing i i i definitely thought it was gonna be half hour like every up until i still am doubtful about this i'm like how trustworthy is this right source i haven't kicked the tires on that so maybe it's false <laughs> right by the time this comes out it's like, i saw the same thing yeah i think that sounds believable i mean so many streaming shows now are just like i feel like each episode is bloated yeah um and even the entire series or season might be bloated with just like filler really mm, yeah uh, i could see that happening i feel that way yeah. about another sonic themed <laughs> show in fact oh yeah whoa yeah. Is it Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog? Is no, it Sonic it is. AM? Is it Sonic Boom? No. Is it Sonic no. Underground? Is it Sonic no. X? No. Oh, my God, man. Is it Sonic Boom? Is it Sonic Mania one. Adventures? <laughs> uh, is no. it no. Uh, Team Sonic Racing Adventures? Is no. it Knuckles That's the okay. Echidna? Did you somehow already see it? Uh, <laughs> Not uh, time traveled back here from the future. Well, I think I've said all of the shows. Uh, you actually, I'm afraid you forgot <laughs> one, Grant. <sighs> There is one. Oh, right. The anime that they didn't make in the early 90s, but then later they made the OVA, which is two episodes. So, yeah, that's true. That's right. The OVA. <laughs> also, not that one. So, the, so the latter parts of Sonic Prime, Saga, what's your verdict? <laughs> Both like, I'm done with this bit. Keep yeah. going. <laughs> just, just strive just straight to it. <laughs> what's your rating out of 10? No, no decimals. No, no, Whoa. no. I think. That it is a solid six. Ooh, that's lower than I would have guessed, and maybe lower than what I would give it. That's interesting. Ooh. I I will I still stand by my previous statement in the earlier episode, where I I, I think out of what I've seen, it is the best of the Sonic shows. Oh wow! That <laughs> so the ceiling is six. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> Knuckles show you've got that is the bar. Yes, yeah, quite uh, a legacy. <laughs> I think, but that that said, I mean, I think it is a good show. Like if if you gave me, if you asked me to rate it on five out of five, I would give it a three. Like, yeah, that does sound better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like <laughs> scale wise, it's the same. But you're like, yeah, you know, it's only off by two. Three out of five, five. That's what. Yeah, you can maybe put that on the back of the box. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, three stars you would. You would put three stars because the person might assume, oh, it's out of four stars. <laughs> oh, like don't, a Roger, don't know. Roger Ebert, three stars? Right. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, or but the- if you put six, they know for sure that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're like, six is definitely, it's not out of seven. It's not out, <laughs> not out of eight. Um, how many Chaos Emeralds does it go for? Oh, yeah, yes. I mean. I guess four. Chaos right? Emerald. Yeah. Four, wow. Okay. Yeah. Right, that fourth Chaos Emerald. So what, what, what do you think the strengths of the the show are overall now that we've seen it all and then the the latter part uh just to get a sense of where we all are who who has seen how much of prime i've seen 
practically all of it maybe not all in the right order and uh whatever else because you know, i have a small child small children like to rewatch things and watch things out of order but i think i've seen it all in in totality all right well i've also seen it all i, I saw it in order with without children so i couldn't even look at them and go are you enjoying this because <laughs> listen <laughs> uh I've seen a couple episodes. Uh, I the last, the most recent one being maybe the first and or last episodes of season two, possibly mm-hmm. because each new season they were putting it on YouTube before, uh-huh, right. and I think I would I would engage with it that way, and then I would go to Netflix and I'd be like, eh, I don't know. That's fair. Couldn't bring yourself to follow through. I wouldn't follow it to it the second streaming location but yeah very interested in <laughs> your guys is six out of ten what david Bo? what you Bo? you said you'd go higher than a six i would go high i don't know if i'd go higher than a seven it's a damn sight better than willy wonka and the chocolate factory yeah i'm still doubling down on that <laughs> <Uh-oh>. unsubscribe <laughs> right. did you ever see charlie in the Ch- the johnny depp one though no I, whichever one was around in VHS in 1992. Yeah, that's the one I'm reacting yeah, the Gene to. Yeah, the Gene Wilder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic, uh, <laughs> beloved, strange and eccentric. Yeah. Yeah, but... All right, cl- closing that, that door again. Yeah. Seven, seven is the overall par for all things Sonic. I think we've <laughs> generally come to agree. It's like seven is, you're, you're happy with a seven. Yeah, well, I guess my overall thing is like, if I were a kid now, this is my Sonic series. I would be perfectly happy with it. Like the way I grew up in 1993 and 1994 watching Set AM, mm-hmm. like I feel like this is a worthy successor to that. And I, I like there's a generation of kids, like this is going to be their thing. And I say, good job, kids. You got a good, good one of those things. And for the kids who grew up with, uh, you know, Sonic Underground, it, I, I'm sorry, kids, you, you got a bad roll of the dice. <laughs> right. They were just a couple years too late for. Sad AM and AOSTH, and uh, just a couple years too early for Sonic X because we know there is a whole generation of of Sonic X kids out there. Right. Yeah. So, God, yeah, Underground is you missed the boat as a child. <laughs> Some of the Sonic generations got lost. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would I would agree with you, Bo. That like I think that this is like the Sat AM of our time, basically. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just like. Uh, if I were seven, uh, you know, between the ages of like four and 10, I would be all over the show. I, I would love it to death and back. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think the, the kids do like it and I think they're justified in liking it. I think like it looks really good. I think like surprisingly the opening little music, like it's not the sad I am theme, but <laughs> it's still pretty good. Like I have it in my head right now. and. I would listen to like a four minute mix of that. Yeah, you know, I think the kids are going to be all right. They have a good Sonic foundation to build on. They have, you know, argu- arguably better comics to build on than <laughs> I had as a yeah. kid. So I think they're going to be fine. How did you guys feel about the supporting cast uh, and the portrayals on the various different portrayals of Amy Knuckles, Tails, you know, Tails as an arch enemy? Knuckles is a dumb pirate. Um, Big is, you know, I don't know. Uh, I didn't watch it. You guys did. Um, but in thinking about how it compares to the 90s, it's like, well, at least the kids get like a pretty consistent Sonic cast and there's variations of them, but it's still the same characters. Mine is Silver. There's no Silver. Silver didn't appear there's in no Prime. Fil- I... There's no Blaze in Prime, is there? No, you got Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, Big the Cat, and the Bird. You get Birdie uh, and Rouge. Rouge. Yeah. Don't forget, yeah. And uh right. And Eggman. Shadow. Right. Well, Shadow is solid. Sh- Shadow is one being. Sonic is one being. Eggman is split into five in one world and doesn't exist in any of the others. What about Cream? Cream does oh, no cream. not exist. Uh things don't exist. Uh Green Hill Zone is the only place that exists. I guess except for the Hidden Palace zone in sprite form only. Well, at least you two guys that are like, yeah, it's good. I don't like it. Ooh. <laughs> What's your rating out of ten, David? Oh, oh boy. my rate. See, see, like if if I gave it a five or a six, it's because I'm still putting like a sad AM higher than that. <laughs> uh, 
like ah oh, god um i did go on like an extended this is why it's so bad over uh on uh, ftcr the ftcr youtube channel where i'm pretty sure i went on for like an hour going <laughs> it this it's all bad um because i f- i feel like it's it's a waste of a good premise and there's just a lot of like holes in in the narrative and i feel like season three especially suffers from the fact that anything that could be interesting doesn't happen and you you get like three episodes of a really long fight scene and when i'm watching it i'm just like it would be so much better if it did x y and z and i and it's not just like oh well this isn't my sonic when i was a kid i feel like oh there's things in here that would make it even better i think a kid will enjoy it fine enough but i just feel like it could have been a lot better and even like shadow's use at in like during the middle of the season at one point he does just fall into a hole and stays there and i'm like why is shadow in a hole i was i was hoping that maybe like when sonic returns with the cavalry and they're and they're going and running around in the in the grim and going against nine like I'm just going, oh, wouldn't it be good if they went into that tower and like there was stuff going on in the tower and then they eventually meet up with Shadow and he gives them a crucial piece of information that helps them get to the top of the tower so that they can fight face nine and, and do some stuff. And it's like, no, he's just in a hole and he's been in that hole till Sonic showed up. And then he went, oh, I guess I could just jump out of this hole. And and I'm I'm <sighs> I, I will not argue you <laughs> at all, but but I do think. I do think that the like just the way that I don't know, just the way that characters are portrayed is just kind of fun. It's not deep by any means. But when you get I mean, when you get Shadow and Sonic teaming up in this last season, Mm -hmm. that's pretty great. I mean, just seeing them bounce off of each other, you know, just the the different attitudes of you know, I'm the coolest and, (laughs) and Sonic just being this like perky little Mm -hmm. snark ball. Um, (laughs) I just, I think it's fun. Coming to uh, arcades this summer. Yeah. Yes. I think shadow is the best character in that show. I would agree. And there's, there are definitely, yeah, there's some good moments between them. It's, It's just my biggest issue maybe is with Sonic the Hedgehog as a character in the show. Because he doesn't absorb information. Yeah, he's kind of dumb. He he's yes. very dumb. He starts dumb in season one and just continues on. And so by by the end of season three, when he's like, "Oh, but nine, he wants to maybe do the," I'm like, "No, like it's already been established. You know, he's not tails. You know this. It feels like sort of the, the premise of the show starts falling apart. And I still don't know what the rules." of that universe are or what the rules of the shatter space is because I, I, I'm with yeah. you too. Like as Sango said, like I don't dispute any of your points, but I still <laughs> have good, good overall vibes about it. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah there's it, a lot of Dragon Ball Z of it. Like, okay. Yeah. yeah. Does this fight need to take three episodes? And oh, the show could, I think could have been 12 episodes. Maybe. Yeah. You know, on the other 100%. hand, my entire eighth grade class, all left school in a real big hurry to go watch Dragon Ball Z in 1998. And that is true. We're like a little old for it. And like nobody admits that that's what they're doing, but everybody was doing it. <laughs> yeah, I, everyone, yeah. I mean, that's, I, I think it, I think it looks, I think it's animated well. I think there's, there's definitely just a lot more potential than what they explored. I don't think I have anything against any of the voice actors. Yeah, no, I think they're all pretty decent. Like best, best Rouge ever, right? Yeah, no, Rouge, yeah. Not that there's much competition. Oh, right. The only voice actor that I wasn't feeling was Knuckles, like regular Knuckles, who's only like in the first episode because the other versions of Knuckles is somebody else talking. So it's like you forget. And I only realized when I went back and went, oh, that's a different guy. That's weird. Um, the, yeah, it's, it's got good vibes. It's got good looks. It's just. I, it's a it's a big old mess and they don't know what they're doing at the end and it uh, it just is such a big stumble for me i wanted to be better i wanted to like it and i think maybe that's what it is like i just don't like it yeah is there a consensus best episode or best moment or is it there's a few different options to pull from i so mine is and 
uh, I'm curious as to what you think, Sango. I think like the first four and a half minutes of the first episode before they ruin the great premise of like, hey, we got all the right characters in the right place doing the right stuff. Similar to Sonic X, that's the peak. I think that, yeah, I think anyone who actually cares about, like has any investment in Sonic, the Sonic franchise is probably, that's probably what they're going to go for. I really like uh, episode six of season two, Double Trouble, <laughs> in which Sonic meets his match in Chaos Sonic. Oh, yeah. Which is a, a uh, basically a mental Sonic. Right. Um, but snarky and chatty. <laughs> also kind of a dog, right? Like, yeah. like, like kind of looks like a dog. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but he's just, he's very, he's very chatty. He's like, he's like Sonic, but evil in, in, well, how do I put this? He's like snarky, chatty Sonic, but evil. All right. Um, mm. Which is something that I have not seen before. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, except for maybe, I guess, oh. I guess there was that character called Evil Sonic. <laughs> right. Sonic. <laughs> the classic evil. <laughs> Copyright Ken Benders. Copyright Ken Benders. Uh, and and yes. then Scourge, the Hedgehog, which was, I guess, is still now Copyright Ken Benders, though, designed by, oh God, was it Tyson? Was it Spaz? Doesn't matter. Uh, but he was, he always seemed like a bit more of a serious character. I, I don't know if he would be. Uh, evil I guess Sonic? he was. Ser- yeah, he, he was. Are you thinking snarky? I guess he's snarky. He, he, when he's introduced, he's wearing a leather yeah. jacket and yeah. dark sunglasses, <laughs> which I think tells you yeah. everything. <laughs> he's like, uh, what rebel without a cause? Uh, Happy Day Fonz. Yeah, evil Sonic. Yeah, That's what he Fonzie. is. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess Ian tried to make him a bit more like, hey, let's let's push it, but. Ken's version of Evil Sonic, except for the end where it got weird and creepy, and he's like, "I'm pretending to be Sonic the Hedgehog." Uh, yeah, he was still you don't trying think to. He's be one like... of the greatest characters of the 20th century. <laughs> Evil Sonic's <laughs> descent into becoming Scourge, into becoming. I don't know. I still like issue 19. I think it's still a good Evil Sonic. Like he shows up in the middle. He's like, "I'm gonna cause some chaos." This is good stuff there. Uh, what was the name again? Chaos Sonic? Chaos Sonic. Chaos yeah, because he's made Sonic. Chaos Council. Yeah, oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I just wish those Eggman were doing it something else. Yeah, I don't like the Eggman. No, yeah. because I, I've said this before in places where I'm like, I kind of wish it was set up where each universe had its own version of Eggman. Right. They all team up, become the Chaos Council in the middle of the season. Uh, I mean, right, of the show. They start doing things, and you can still then at the near the end have like, nine do the heel turn because it really doesn't focus on what should be the existential crisis of if i fix things maybe i won't exist which doesn't seem to actually matter at the end because maybe they do all exist and did exist or does it it's another thing with like what are the rules of this of this world that's it falls apart because it's not as concerned with that there's way more focus on palm tree existing than what is nine's mental status is he is he having an existential crisis because if he helps sonic he may no longer exist and who wants to stare into oblivion to help somebody you met five minutes ago it gets funny but yeah i mean chaos sonic i think is fine he's he's he's, um it it was a good fight sequence i think so and i also like that he didn't out outstay his welcome as well which a lot of the show does so (laughs) right nines versions uh that are i guess more stoic and metal sonic like they're just around forever and i'm like okay i'm done but at least yeah chaos sonic yeah he gets what like two episodes right like, like i think so yeah like an episode uh, and a half or something yeah yeah that's a, that's a good amount just to to have fun it's like yeah you know let, let's have a let's have a metal sonic let's and uh to give them credit he, he doesn't just look like metal sonic right because even uh the sonic boom franchise when they show Metal Sonic, he looks exactly like Metal Sonic, even though they did try to redesign and, and do stuff. And Sega was like, no, just make him look like Metal. So I'm happy that they were actually able to do something different with the idea of a robot Sonic in this show. So, yeah, I will, I will give it props there. I think that's probably like the big positive um, <laughs> contribution that Sonic Prime has made to the 
to the Sonic dumb as a whole is mm-hmm. I, I really like Chaos Sonic. But David, did you say what what's your uh, top moment from the show overall? Um, you know what is the top moment? I feel like it's it's when Sonic and Shadow team up in the what what is it? It's the Phantom Green Hill, but it's called something else. Uh, yeah, a Ghost Hill. Yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, I like I like especially I guess it was the last episode of season two. It's them fighting. And then I really I did enjoy the the super form of Sonic where he's powered up by the Paradox Prism. I thought like him talking to himself was neat. Like there, there's some good stuff in that episode. Yeah, I think there's moments I like. It's just. Oh, but yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go with that. Just that last season two, episode eight, maybe as a whole. I'm I'm I was feeling it. Oh, if I may ask. Yeah. What is modern Bo's? take on yeah well so i i asked uh i asked him because he saw the last episode before me i said oh did they did they fix all the shatter spaces does like nine's world continue to exist and sonic's friends get restored and he's like i don't know i don't know <laughs> <laughs> unclear but but i i think based on you know how often have we gone back to it since it finished up i, I think you know two thumbs up from the youth the youth and, like they're going to be debating it you know, on their own podcast in 25 years right like hey, no, 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 no. You, know, you know if you think about it from from nine's perspective they can use this as like a archival audio clip yeah where they're using it oh man we have to be the link to the past a legend mm-hmm. of zelda uh-huh. and ask the question which is did Ken Penders do this better? <laughs> Did Ken Penders already do all of the Sonic Prime, but better in the end game and even with Evil Sonic and the, what was it? The highway of... Uh, the Cosmic Interstate. The Cosmic <laughs> Interstate. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. It is a thoroughfare. You were close. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, and I feel like that one also taps into, we're still calling it the information superhighway back then. It's like a... <laughs> the internet it's it's coming yeah it is there's cyberspace that's right okay and and we we called it cyberspace not cyberspace it was cyberspace Mm -hmm. yeah right scooby-doo did a cyber chase once in cyberspace (laughs) so you know that's where we're all (laughs) oh my god it it uh yeah yeah look i'm just sitting here excited in 25 years to hear modern Bo be like i respond to my father's podcast <laughs> like hey let's play a clip of just contemporary reactions to the show right it's like who's this david guy i don't know it's way off the rails wow mm-hmm. i mean that's the dream is to is to be a uh <laughs> the thing you bury and then later on people are like oh woohoo look what i found a, a time capsule yeah yeah I like you put it I was looking for, yeah time capsules yeah are... yeah my my elementary school had a time capsule that was in the uh like the cornerstone of the building where it was like oh there's the date of the building and as kids it'd be like oh yeah you know there's a time capsule in there we don't know what's in it but you know, like if the school ever gets torn down we'll see what's in it it's like wow cool can't wait for that Wait a minute. What year was it, Rob? Uh, it was like 1931 or something, or maybe it was 1921. It, I, don't know. I don't remember exactly now, but I looked at it and was like, wow, that's cool. Like, I wish I could just pull it out and look inside. Uh, like, what's the best thing that's going to be in there? Like, <laughs> Oh, well, it, it ended up just being like a newspaper and a Bible or something. Right. Yeah. Like a forker. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, beca- right. We also did bury our own individual time capsules in, in like the school playground which i'm guessing because the school doesn't exist anymore it was torn down and they built <laughs> retirement uh, a retirement well, did they open the capsule when they tore it down or you weren't there oh well well it, what <laughs> what it was is that while they were in the process of tearing it down me and my sister would sneak over oh. to the half destroyed remains of our elementary school and sneak in and see what was there wow. and over time we would like we 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 uh, acquired a few things uh we stole a desk a chair uh, a clock, a pencil sharpener, uh, you know, just grabbing things that were, were left behind and were just going to be uh, thrown out because they're destroying it. Uh, I stole the, I, I mean, I found the entire 1991 and 1992 tax records for my elementary school. That was fun uh, because there was also like, oh, there's a there's a room in the basement. And as a kid, you're not allowed to go in the basement. 
So I finally got to go in the basement and it wasn't as exciting as I thought it was. But, you know, it was still pretty cool. There was some stuff there from like the school. Fair. I'm scared. Oh, yeah. This is a memory. I'm still like, oh, don't yeah. go in the basement. What are you talking about? <laughs> Right. So so what ended up happening, we weren't the only ones who would sneak into it. We met this this woman who also went to the school, I guess, a few years after us. So she was. uh, Yeah, I I, I don't remember the ages now, but it was like, oh, yeah, she was super interested and wanted what was in the time capsule. So she kept on talking to the construction workers. And so she was there. She was present when they finally opened it up in there and saw what was inside. But somebody from the city was also there and was like, this is city property. You cannot have it and took it. And I guess just filed it away in in some other dusty box where it sits and rots, which is unfortunate. Like, I I would have liked to at least seen what was in there. I just know it was like a newspaper and like, I think, a Bible and then maybe something else, but nothing too exciting. But what if it was the Sega (laughs) Tower of Power? Well, that would what have if been it was the 32X <laughs> Sega CD, a packed in Sega Nomad. Oh wow! What if thousands of dollars of of Sega material and just like what, like what, what is this? The Tokyo Toy Show demo? Oh well, that <laughs> that belongs to the city. Sorry. Uh- <laughs> hey, I'm gonna use this transition. Oh yeah. To uh, to ask you guys, hey, do you guys know Tokimeki Memorial Forever with You, the Japanese dating sim? <laughs> uh it. I feel like I've seen that name online, but I couldn't tell you a thing about it. Well, if you had played this game for uh, three years of subjective game time, <laughs> and during that time uh, in your dating sim, you had joined the school's computer club uh-huh. and attended those computer club meetings within the, the, the game, religiously to the, to the exclusion of everything else, in the words of the, the person who figured this out, uh, you would unlock a couple of mini games inside of this dating sim game that are kind of really awesome Konami shooters. So one of them is from the, uh, the Twin B series. So that's a, you know, oh. Konami series of uh, vertical shooters. And then another one's this totally original one called Scythe that is like really full featured, looks great, like makes good use of the Saturn's graphics, has like cool mechanics for shooting and stuff. The only way to play it is inside this dating sim in this like obscure corner that <laughs> no one's <laughs> ever going to actually find. Wow. wow. Very unclear what Konami was doing. Like, was this a prototype? Were they developing it for the arcade? And they're like, ah, you know, Bob retired, so we're not going to finish this. We're just going <laughs> to stick, stick what we have inside this game. Anyway, wow. I have liberated these two cool shooters from this game. Whoa. You can wow. just open them up and play them straight through without spending... 12 hours of reading Japanese menus of like, flir- you've got to like also understand like flirting in 1990s Japan, which um, I, I don't, I didn't understand flirting at all in 1990s uh, US, America. Uh, there you go. Or uh, 2000s. But I, and- I still can <laughs> play this game and still invest 25. You can still do it the old way, or you can oh, do it the new God. way where you just uh, boot it right up and play Scythe or Twin B Time Attack. So That uh, sounds a lot better. I just want to make sure they're not taking away <laughs> my ability to right. do it the old way. Your right as an American. My right. You're going to have to import the Saturn and Tokimeki Memorial because it never came out in the U.S., although it's like one of the best-selling examples of this genre. Hmm. Never, never made it to the U.S. Fascinating. So that, that that is a a Rings of Saturn update. Rings of Saturn uh, early preview for Sonic Wiggly listeners. Uh, <laughs> by the time you hear this, it won't be out yet, but in a few days. <laughs> right. I like how you went. Hey, this is a good segue, and you never actually established. I'm talking about my research. It's just like I, although I guess. Uh, long-time listeners should know by now right if, but if, if you're, you're talking not... about some obscure sega saturn game that of course <laughs> is connected but to anyone who's listening this is their first episode they're probably very confused <laughs> yeah my time capsule is uh <laughs> right. from 1997 right and and here it is that's uh that's so exciting that's such a nice thing to do if I were the guy that made that game, I would be very happy. I'm so I I hope that person reaches <laughs> out and explains. <laughs> Here's what was going to happen. We were going to put this in the arcades, but yeah. yeah. What's the rest of the story? I don't know. We don't know. <laughs> Sango. A lot of people are wondering what the next Sonic 
series should be? Where where do we go from Sonic Prime? Well, should it be a comedy? Should it be anime? Should it be more Sonic Prime? Something else? Uh, spoiler alert. Um, I think we have kind of brought up a lot of spoilers from the show already, but just in case, uh, the last episode of Sonic Prime does end with a little bit of a cliffhanger. Um, just just a smidge, just kind of enough that it could it could leap right onto that. Do I want that? Do you want that? Do you? Maybe not. Wait, if I had to pick like another season of Boom or another season of Prime, I would pick Boom. But I would not be disappointed with another season of Prime. Like I don't know, shows used to have a lot of episodes to kind of like figure stuff out. There's a lot of adventures of. That's true. And did yeah. they ever figure it out? I'm not sure. Well, they, they never got a second season. They had to plow through 65 episodes <laughs> in like, I feel like they had about three days to make them. Uh, yeah. That's so many. It is a lot. Deke was wild. No, I think that was a pretty standard set because you want to get in. They're a syndicated. Yeah. So you need like a certain number. But I mean, I guess just the fact that like the, the turnaround. Yeah. Because it was so late when they decided to even make that show. I forget. The, and there's not many writers. It's almost all Reed and Bruce Shelley, which is a father-son team. They've done some interviews. Right. There's all there's a Bob Woodward. I is that no? So wait, is that his name? There, there's <laughs> no, the Watergate scandal. The famous investigative reporter. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that is. You're right. I'm like that is wrong. Uh, um, <laughs> I didn't realize. Do you think he's played? Do you think Bob Woodward? <laughs> Woodward, no. Bernstein, definitely. <laughs> You think Bernstein? Okay. Yeah. Which one was played by Dustin Hoffman and which one was played by Robert Redford? Oh, snap. Yeah. Listener, if you know the answer, email us Sonic Weekly Podcast at Gmail and we will give you a prize to be determined what that prize is. But prizes in the past have included the game Sonic 06 and could again <laughs> include that could, that could potentially be in your future. Dear listener, if you know this easily researched information so Brad, are you just trying to unload a copy of 06 on somebody i want to share the joy <laughs> i want to spread the gospel of 06 that it is not that bad in fact that is what i'm feeling more and more as i'm playing uh heroes and shadow so i finished one playthrough of shadow i understand that there's 11 endings with heroes i'm about 60 percent through team sonic Almost nothing for Team Dark, almost nothing for Chaotix, about 50% for Team Rose, because I've been playing with Ashlyn. Those games, they feel very complementary together. They feel like they go, you know, it's the same engine, right? And the the character models look very similar. And then also just both are about replaying over and over and over and over to, like, really complete it. And I guess I'm going to do that. at least to some degree, at least with heroes, I would like to get to the true ending. I've listened to the last song enough and like, I know the lore of it, but I've never actually experienced it because I've always resented Sonic heroes. And I've found that there's good reason to resent Sonic heroes. It's pretty annoying, (laughs) but I'm actually coming to like it more. However, I would say that if you can get through heroes, if you can get through shadow, but for some reason you're like, Oh, Oh six, I could never, you can do Oh (laughs) six. You can straight up do 06. The worst part about 06 is the load times. That is annoying in 2006, but in 2024, that's a phone break. You just get to go on your phone. That's pretty cool. Uh, And then you're back in the game. Oh, not really. Back to the phone. That's okay. You could play Sonic Toy Fall Guys. (laughs) You could. While playing Sonic 06. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. How many characters from Sonic 06, like original Sonic 06 characters, do you think are going to be in Sonic Fall Guys? Probably all of them. Like Luffy Luffy Man? Oh, God. He should be in there. He should. Sonic Man, I would say, is... Sonic Man probably will. Sonic Man's Sonic fairly Man. iconic. He was in uh, some official art recently, right? Yeah, just say Japan is, is leaning into the, the Sonic Man. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was voted by fans. And neck and neck with Silver, which, you know, I, I'm going to pick Sonic Man over Silver. Yeah. Yeah, you got to... Well, it's... Right, no, it was uh, Mephilus, right? Oh, what? I'm, because it's, no, I'm thinking of a, like a drawing. Right, the art is Silver and Sonic Man together. Okay, it, so it could have been Mephilus and that's it. Sonic Man. Yeah, yeah okay. that's what they're. Yeah, they're like, hey, vote. Um, right. The the person I was trying to think of was Bob Forward. He was, uh, <laughs> and also Jeffrey Scott is somebody who wrote a lot of episodes of AOSTH. So 
I can't find any evidence that Bob Woodward has ever experienced Sonic the Hedgehog, but I'm willing to invite him and ask. We found out this week that Paul McCartney talked to Koji Kondo, right? There was like some headline oh, I briefly looked at. I think I missed this. On Nintendo Life or something, which I think all but confirms our running theory that he does know and has played Sonic right. to some degree. Uh, can we get him? Can we get Paul McCartney on the podcast? <laughs> I don't see why not. Yeah. What else is he doing? If you're Paul McCartney, email us. <laughs> SonicWeeklyPodcast at gmail.com. Right. I think that Paul McCartney would be a big Sonic guy. He'd be a good get. I, if he's name surging after the last episode, he might just like naturally say, oh, yeah, let me help clear some things up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, looking at... Min- <laughs> yeah. All right. So there was an interview with Gene park oh yeah right uh the washington post uh koji kondo i'm looking at nintendolife.com uh reminisced of his work with nintendo etc koji kondo and shigeru miyamoto happened to be in attendance at a paul mccartney concert in japan when the former Beatle learned of their arrival the songwriter had apparently loved the music featured in super mario brothers so much he invited both kondo and miyamoto backstage when the pair arrived backstage, McCartney and his then wife Linda approached Kondo and Miyamoto and simply sang out the opening notes of the Super Mario Brothers theme. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Damn it. Paul McCartney is a Nintendo kid. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Do you think Paul McCartney was like, I, I won't, I won't buy it. I won't get a Mega Drive, mate. <laughs> Gotta get that. How do you think that yeah. went down? Like, okay, so Miyamoto and Kondo are in the audience and then like somebody goes to McCartney, like uh, uh, Mr. McCartney, uh, the Nintendo guys are here. He's like, oh, bring them in. Wow. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. I didn't know, but I didn't know. Right. He, but now you know. Right. I do know. We should get him. I just want to talk to Paul McCartney about, like, does he play other video games? If he was that into Mario, was he like, yeah, like he was really into Kid Icarus for some reason or. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. What other? I want the running total of all video games. <laughs> he was into synthesizers in the eighties. That's like kind of adjacent. Like you're like, okay, I like electronics. What other cool electronics are coming out of here? Right. He, has he played Tokimeki Memorial Forever with you? Has he unlocked? <laughs> unlocked? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Because it's like, what else are they doing? How many times can you go to the private island and enjoy? your submarine you can only <laughs> go to so many depths before it's like i've seen this coral before and then maybe you're wondering about oh yeah the bloody sonic tuesday was it, Did it? <laughs> you guys should make sure to in the episode title for this episode mention that you talk about paul mccartney yeah. right yeah so when his name searching again. <laughs> yes. like when you're stranded on an island and you like use the bodies of the other survivors to spell <laughs> sos <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh. I, you know paul, paul mccartney <laughs> Just thinking of the episode title, Begging Paul McCartney. Begging Sango. Oh, yeah. Exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet Paul would be very good at saying what Sonic game relates to which Beatles album. <laughs> yeah. Our last episode, dear listener, you can find you can hear all about it in the Beatles episode. Oh man, right? It'd be funny oh yeah, the you... Aquabats. We were supposed to bring up the Aquabats before we go. Oh yeah. So uh, Sango and I recently uh, learned that both of us are like huge Aquabats fans with like really strong opinions on like what are the good Aquabats songs. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to ask you, Sango, what do you think of Super Rad? <laughs> versus red sweater oh interesting um you know i'll be honest i really enjoyed fury of the aquabats in my like ska phase which of course as any good ska head knows never ends <laughs> same yeah yes but i think that i really really got into them with starting with charge um which is kind of post ska right yeah so uh, yeah i think uh what was it red sweater and super rad yeah super rad i think super rad is pretty rad super rad is pretty rad right that's the thing about aquabats is like yeah they came out of the 90s ska boom but then they have this like awesome album from 2005 with no ska on it that is just hit after hit after hit and it is the greatest 
Charge. If you haven't listened to Charge, put put that on your Spotify. Yes, it's it's like I think the only bad thing I can say about Charge is that at this point I've listened to that album so many times that I don't even hear the songs anymore. Like I'll put yeah. it on and I'm just absolutely. Like, I don't hear it. Yeah, I'm so no, familiar. I, with I'm them. the same way. Yeah, it's super good. You know, and then I love. About- Oh, I was going to say, fun fact about the Aquabats Fury album, it, the drummer is Travis Barker of Blink-182 wearing a, a, a wetsuit costume as an Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he sold out and ditched them for a much more lucrative gig. Oh, dear. Although he did play with them in a uh, 2018 show. Donned the wetsuit again and played. Okay. I can respect that. I do also really love the follow-up, eight-year follow-up to Charge, which is Hi-Fi Soup. It's like Charge, but completely sugar-coated yeah what well, it's interesting because i i remember it as yeah this is good but it's not as good as charge that's disappointing but then i'm going through the tracks today and i'm like oh that one's pretty good and i like that one yeah i like that one too there's a cameo from strong bad on there oh uh, there's a yeah biz Marquis has a verse on there which yeah, is great biz Marquis is there it's so good yeah no i i love those two albums in particular uh dear listeners on behalf of sonic weekly uh, I'm just going to put the statement out there that if you haven't listened to the Aquabats, get on it. You should listen to the Aquabats. I'm certain one of the Jacobs brothers has played Sonic. Like, they, there's just no way they were touring the the clubs of the U.S. in the '90s and didn't crash on somebody's floor who had a Genesis hooked up. <laughs> uh, Mega 64, the comedy video game group uh, that has been putting on web uh, videos for years and years and years now often their videos have aquabat songs in them as well they're (laughs) they're big fans i saw i've seen this happen a couple of times now that i've seen the aquabats but the first time i saw them do it it was quite the thing so i'm at the aquabats show they're playing their set the aquabats show also has a visual component so they're playing like old cartoons behind them and they're like also like enemies are coming and they're fighting them as the the songs are playing like you should go see an aquabats (laughs) show anyway at, at one point during the show they invite uh, who's the youngest member of the audience up onto the stage? And some some kid invariably comes up on the stage and they say, oh, how old are you? And he says, oh, I'm five. And then they say, all right, you are going to be the coolest kid at school tomorrow, uh, little Timmy. And then they throw him into the crowd and that kid crowd surfs. Wow. And the entire place holds a breath for that moment that that kid is suspended in midair on the way from the stage down you know, toward the, the cold, hard floor. But he, he's, he's caught by, by these hands, and then the kid is having a great time, and you're like, oh, thank God the kid did not <laughs> yeah. eat, eat the floor. <laughs> the time I saw them do it, it got written up in TMZ as, like, these crazy, irresponsible men dressed in wetsuits launch child from stage. Uh, <laughs> Isn't the lead singer also, like, one of the co-creators of Yo Gabba Gabba? That's correct, yeah. So he knows, he knows his kid stuff. Yeah, well, the great irony of the Aquabats is that if you were to listen to them, you would be like, oh, this is like from a TV show, like a kid's TV show. I'm just listening to like this cartoon band. Oh, isn't it funny? They put out a CD, but they didn't really have a TV show. But then they made a TV show that wasn't the Aquabats. They did. But then they made a TV show that was the Aquabats. Yes, that's right. 20 years later. Yeah, the Aquabats Super Show. um, Also, very, very fun. Very, very fun show. I can't remember a single thing about any episode that I watched, but. It's just like brain candy while they're watching it. One more question, then we'll get out of here. Uh, last week, we touched a little bit on the brand new Penny's Big Breakaway. Wahoo! Have you played any of this since we last spoke? Saga, have you played any Penny? I have not played Penny. I haven't even played Sonic Superstars. Oh, wow. Okay, well, you, uh, of, the, of the two, you should get on Superstars. <laughs> yeah, wait, I th- I th- what, didn't we, weren't we like somewhere scheduling plans for you to come over and play it at some point? That's that's what we should do next time we hang out. Yeah. Sounds All like right. you should go over there right now. <laughs> Don't make a play heroes. Yeah, play it was play uh superstars. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, no we'll play superstars. David, have you have you played any penny? Uh no, I still haven't played any penny. Okay. I have no penny updates. No pennies for no no pennies for my uh, I'll come up with a better <laughs> smoothies. Add pretend I added something really great here. <laughs> once you David, once you play yeah. I would give you a penny for your thoughts. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> you needed somebody else. Right. It's like, oh man, it's such a great joke. It's such a great pun. Well, I, I've played some of it with my older son, and usually that takes the form of, oh, this bit is too hard. You do it. But I I don't mind playing that role, and uh, I like the game 
probably more than I expected to like it, given kind of the general vibe we had last week. Uh, I've got some nitpicks. Uh, and I've seen this comparison a couple of times now, and I think it's right, which is like everybody thinks, oh, it's the Sonic Mania team. This isn't a Sonic game. That's disappointing. But it is like Billy Hatcher. <laughs> you don't have a giant egg, but you have a, you know, a giant yo-yo, and really it's not all that different. Huh. So it, it's given off Billy Hatcher vibes. It's kind of Billy Hatcher vibes, which... That does remind me, though, that you are Uncle from Another World, and it is like guy who's only played Billy Hatcher... <laughs> thinks every game kind of is a little <laughs> bit like Billy Hatcher. <laughs> it's a little bit bad. You know, actually, it, yeah, I have not thought about Billy Hatcher in a very long time, but... Well, neither has Sonic Team. I played <laughs> Billy Hatcher for the very first time, did not get very far at all. So basically just turned it on. Right. It turned it on, ran around. I was surprised that you start out in the dark at night. thought that was strange. It was a strange choice. And I, I forget how far I got after that. All right. I've only played a little bit of Billy Hatcher. It it was a lot more fun than I was expecting it to be. I was very resistant for whatever reason. I thought it it was a completely different game than it really is. Um, yeah, I I should go back to it. I've been lazy about it. Uh, so hey, if 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 Penny is the spiritual successor, I mean that that sounds like a good thing. Billy Hatcher was probably the last time Sonic Team was allowed to be weird, right? Yeah, yeah. I I think it's the best comparison. Of the, that I know. I think all really all of their games are weird. Sonic is a unique franchise. Sonic is weird. There's not a lot of other games that are like Sonic, Rolling Rascal a little bit. And we talked about this a bit last week, but like, and Bo was just saying it, but Penny is, is not that much like Sonic. Sonic, whether it's 3D or 2D, is pretty in its own, probably because it's very hard to make these games. And it's very time intensive and it's, uh, it takes a lot of skill. Maybe Naka was pretty good. And you know what? Naka is innocent. Sango, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Always, uh, it has been a pleasure. David, take us out. Yes, thank you, Sango. Thank you. And I'm sure Naka would also be saying thank you right now. Uh, you know, if you could talk through the phone, because, of course, Yuji Naka must be subscribed to Sonic Weekly. He was name searching. <laughs> he was. He was like, huh, who are these guys? I'll let them, I'll play in the background. They seem to talk about me a lot. I like hearing about myself. And what did he do? Why, what he, what, uh, what you, the lovely listeners out there, should do if you haven't already, which is, of course, subscribe to Sonic Weekly on your podcatcher of choice, be that Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podcast Addict, the open source powerhouse or youtube yeah 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 and and hey if you don't yeah if you don't want to use a podcatcher you want to just hear audio you want to watch someone playing a sonic game mr wait what what, what is the name we we're using for him jack of old games jack of old games i was like i was about to say jack of all trades which is of course a briefly lived uh, bruce campbell television series it was partnered with Cleopatra 2525. Remember that show? No, you don't. I do, rem- no, I do remember <laughs> oh, really? that show, David. <laughs> of course, I remember that show. I remember that show, and I remember VIP. VIP, oh, right. With Pamela Anderson. Oh, yeah. That was a classic of the syndicated era. Yeah. So, you can, so yeah, you can subscribe <laughs> to our YouTube. It's at Sonic-Weekly. Make sure to include the at and the dash. <laughs> And uh, we, what else do we got? We've got we've got an email address. It's sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. Send us a line. Tell us how, how you're doing. Tell us how we're doing. And if you want to get into our Discord server, you still send us an email. Ask for that link. And you'll be able to talk to some like-minded Sonic the Hedgehog fans. We have a grand old time. We don't just talk about Sonic, but we talk about Sonic. We got a Twitter I've left it alone for a few weeks. Sorry about that. <laughs> hey, what else do we got? We've got, a, we have a lot of fun here. <laughs> we have a lot of grand fun here. We, uh, we've we never used AI as far as I know in this show, but... Um... No, false. We had Sonic Set segment. Okay. <laughs> also, we had Richard Dawkins endorse the podcast with his review. Um, <laughs> now we've used AI a couple of times. Hey, what? Okay. I don't know about this. Well, we never charged anyone $45 for that. Uh Thank you, Smoothies, for the edit. Uh, he's, you know, he's the one who makes sure uh, this is listenable. He makes sure it lines up at the end of the song. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Once again, thank you, Sango. Uh, thank you, Bo. Thank you, David. And thank you, Grant. Thank you, David. <laughs>